Welcome to Causal Loop Diagrams Part 2. In the end of the previous video, I talked about the fact that since this is about causal loops, there probably should be a loop here somewhere, and what we have currently represented is simply a, an essentially a cause and effect relationship. If I, if I go ahead and, and take this production inventory relationship and say that as production increases, produc production adds to inventory, Though the organization probably has a target level of inventory that it should, that it believes that it ought to maintain in order to, to serve its customers. So if you compare the inventory with the target inventory, it, it, may, it may be below target or above target, whatever, there's, there's possibly a difference between these two. So if we go ahead and call this, call this the gap, and we use a couple of links to connect this and to connect this, and say that, that this gap re represents the difference between these two, and that difference is, is what influences us to, to increase or decrease production to satisfy the inventory requirements. So as production production adds to inventory, inventory as it increases it would decrease the gap. So let me make this red just because that's the typical notation that I use. And as the gap gets larger it would in fact tend to increase production so I'll go ahead and, and put another plus sign over here. So I now have a loop where production adds to inventory. Inventory reduces, as the inventory increases, it reduces the gap. So that's a, a balancing or negative relationship. And as the gap increases, it would tend to add production. So this, I now have a, have a loop. And this particular type of loop is called a balancing loop and it is typically represented by a uh, a scale to indicate that uh, let me get rid of the label altogether just to say that this is this is a balancing structure and you can tell a balancing structure because if you walk the loop and there could there could be just these three or there should, could be dozens of items in the loop before you get around but if you if you count the number of balancing or negative feedback loops and it is odd then you have a balancing loop balancing loops are in fact goal seeking loops this is the goal and this structure is attempting to maintain or bring the inventory into balance with the target inventory all all balancing structures have goals they tend to produce a uh, curves that look like this and at this point you're just going to have to believe me until we get into one of the sessions where we actually do simulations and i will then go ahead and and simulate a balancing structure but it's it's it starts off rapidly and as it gets closer and closer to the goal it tapers off and finally when it reaches the goal then there would in fact be no more production once the inventory reached the target inventory production would stop and and nothing would change until something reduced the inventory so here's one type of loop let me go and head and take the pictures off of these and put the label in the middle and so what the other type of the other type of loop, the only other type of loop, is called is called a reinforcing loop, and that occurs when whenever there is in fact some action that produces a result, and that's a positive influence. That action that that causes that influences that result is it's a it's a positive influence and 
what happens is that it's of such a nature that it actually encourages more of the same action so that there is in fact another influence from here back to here if uh, if I want to increase sales and I do marketing and it increases sales it probably encourages me to do more marketing to increase sales so it is in fact referred to as a reinforcing loop this is another positive and I'll go ahead and take this oh. well every once in a while when you try to mouse over and get a hold of something the little connection arrow turns on if I deselect the link that problem goes away so that this is a, a reinforcing structure where um, action undertaken produces a result and that result actually influences more of the same action and that is typically referred to as a reinforcing or a growth structure so I'm going to put this in here and put the uh, snowball image on it and get rid of the title so that this is a, a reinforcing structure and you can tell a reinforcing structure because if you if you count if you walk the loops what you end up with is either zero or an even number of balancing or negative reinforcing influences now this is negative not in the sense that it's bad it's just the opposite of positive so so we have balancing loops and reinforcing loops and those are in fact the only types of, of loops that there are there are combinations of these that produce all manner of behaviors but the reinforcing loop tends to produce an exponential growth, growth structure and when we talk about uh, when we do simulations of the reinforcing loop you you will see how it produces that growth structure because the more you do the more result you create and the more result you create the more it promotes action and it simply produces an exponential growth so these are the two loops and there are variances in terms of what you might see this is this is the balancing and reinforcing loop reconstructed with with images overlaid so this is this is sort of a hybrid between a between a causal loop diagram and a, and a rich picture I find that that it's simply easier to convey an understanding of of what the diagram is intended to mean if if I add pictures to it as I was out looking around insight maker after I put this together I ran across this diagram that that Jeff McDonald drew and it is in fact another hybrid there are balancing and reinforcing loop indicators though I'm I haven't spent time to actually investigate and figure out what this is trying to say I just wanted to use it as an example to say here is here is another causal loop diagram with images and here is one that I implemented the other day which is a causal loop diagram for Aesop's fable the boy who cried wolf which starts out with a situation where the person is very bored tending sheep and wants attention which and the two of those interact to induce the the person to cry wolf crying wolf encourages the town people to come running and the person becomes the center of attention which relieves the board boredom there's the balancing reinforcing loop and therefore this is a balancing loop it's very beneficial to you and to other people if you actually put comments on your items so that six months later when you come back and look at it you can remember what it was that you were thinking and if you give it to somebody else to look at they stand a chance of being able to figure out what it was that you were trying to say and it's also helpful if you label the the loops with some short label that says this this is what this loop is is intending to to mean so this is the boredom relief loop 
<clears throat> and at the same time that is happening, if the person cries wolf and there is no wolf, it's a lie, which reduces the belief o meter, which reduces townspeople's willingness to to respond and reducing the center of attention so that if you walk this loop, there's one balancing, two balancing, so it's then even. So this is actually a reinforcing loop which reduces belief. And the additional loop is, if the person cries wolf and there is a wolf, it's true, which increases the belief of meter, which increases the willingness to come running. And if we walk that loop, we have one balancing influence. So this loop itself is, is an improved belief loop. So that's just you know, a, an everyday story expressed as as a causal loop diagram. And Jeff noticed that I created it and put it on Insight Maker, and he just couldn't help himself, so he had to turn it into the boy who cried werewolf. So he reworked the diagram to for cry wolf and with the werewolf, which is a half truth, and the half truth somewhat increases the belief of meter, so it's still an improve. And it, the, this is the kind of thing that happens when you you create things in an environment where other people can actually find them and interact with them. So the 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 point of this session is to acquaint you with the fact that there are two different kinds of loops, balancing loops and reinforcing loops. Reinforcing loops are the engines of growth. Balancing loops attempt to attain goals. The way that you tell the difference is by counting the number of balancing or negative influences around the loop. If it's if it's odd, then it's a balancing loop. If it's even, then it's a reinforcing loop. And if you construct them with images overlaid on them, it just makes it much easier for other people to understand them. And if you put comments on it, it's even better. So thank you much, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.